got to move on. What's not working at Manchester United right now, Janusz? Because it's another Premier League game without a win for them. Um, uh, in a funny way, because we were just talking about it, uh, you know, uh, Liverpool broke them. <laughs> I think they did. You know, and when I say that, it's, it's that incredible momentum where everything worked uh, for them. But, but even saying that, because then they've still won in cup competition since that result. So why, how can you break them in the Premier League and then you can win in other games? Yeah, I mean, you know, of course, I mean, the momentum was still there, I, I think. But, you know, if you, if you look at the results in between, they weren't all that great for Manchester United, right? I think yesterday, just looking at, you know, looking at that team, it makes you wonder if they can cope without Casemiro. I know it's in low hanging fruit, but I mean, look at Newcastle, right? I mean, remember when Guimaraes was suspended for three games? I mean, this was this was a team on a tear, Newcastle United, and they obviously met in the in the League Cup as well. But this team was was an in incredible form. Out he goes. I think without Guimaraes, if I remember correctly, they drew two games and lost one. He's back right now, and it's a different team. It's not just because of him, but that's how important uh, Bruno Guimaraes has been for Newcastle United. And I look at Casemiro, and without him. It, it is a different team. I mean, you look at that midfield. I mean, yesterday, obviously, nobody showed up. I mean, really, nobody showed up. So, you know, I, I don't know if I want to have a dig at Manchester United just yet. They have a couple games, and I can't remember, but I, I think they're looking at two games where Brentford maybe won. Uh, my got Brentford and Everton without Casemiro. Right, but I think both are at Old Trafford, right? And and look, nothing's easy in the Premier League, but I think they can write this. And I think it would be too easy right now to say what's going on with Manchester United, where within six months or less, Eric Ten Hag came in and changed our perception of Manchester United totally, right? So let's just wait and see here, because they ran into a Newcastle team that... I don't know, probably remember the, the loss uh, at Wembley a little bit, uh, where at full strength and really, you know, at St. James's, sometimes games like this come in when you don't have a leader like Casemiro and when you don't have Rashford at his best, because obviously a little bit of a niggle injury just uh, just coming back and, and nothing's really working. So I'm going to wait and see uh, uh, because I'm not ready to have a go at United just yet. However, having said all that, it's kind of interesting because just you know, two, three, four weeks ago, I thought Manchester United easily top four and look where we are now. Well, the next time I see you, they'll have actually played both of those games and you're right, they are both at home. Quick question. What do you make of Bruno Fernandes in the captain's role? <laughs> I don't know. Casemiro picks himself. Uh, so he's no Casemiro. Let's put it that way. OK, fair enough. And just a, just one that I need to pick up on, because it's an interesting one. When it comes to away games for Manchester United, it doesn't look good. You can see that they've lost to Brentford. They've lost to City, Villa, Arsenal, Liverpool and now Newcastle away. Is there something in that then? Mm. Can they not get up for the for the away games, the big away games? Never thought about it, really. Uh, I, it's probably something, well, you've picked up on it. I haven't. My apologies. Uh, Ten Hag probably does. I, I think it's this still process because, you know, I mean, look how easily we get excited about teams and, and runs, right? Manchester United and the transformation has been absolutely tremendous. I think that's uh, uh, that's something that... You know, I don't have an explanation for right now because I think they have the quality uh, right now. I mean, not long ago, remember the last couple of seasons ago, Manchester United couldn't win a game at Old Trafford. And we had no explanation for that as well. So I think part of the process may be maturation a, a little bit. And again, I think it's still a, a pretty big imbalance in that team. You know, I don't want to go into discussion about a striker right now, a leader, but I think, but I think you know, the spine of the team is sort of there, but when one piece is missing, United are not the same. And I've been wanting to say that. I don't know if it's relevant to what you asked me. I mentioned Casemiro. I mentioned, you know, yesterday was, you know, maybe because they were chasing the game, but you saw the reaction from Lis Lisandro Martinez. Both him and Varane uh, were taken out. And, you know, after, right after that, Newcastle scored the second goal. Uh, makes you wonder a little bit. But the issue at, at forward and that spine right now, it's still an issue. So maybe a question of leadership and maybe a question of that one player that in the tough times away from home can get it done. But, you know, I'm, I'm flailing a little bit here because, I, you know, that's a, always a tough question. Why, why that? And I never paid attention to it. I'll, I'll dig into it a little bit deeper now. 
I don't know if I'll come up with something special, but yeah, an interesting stat. That's all right. Okay, see what you can come up with for this. Last question today. Newcastle right now are above Manchester United in the table. They're in third and fourth, respectively. Who finishes above who in that top race? And do they both finish in the top four? Manchester United. I, I think Manchester United is going to be there and Newcastle are going to be there. City in and which all. order? Oh, if it matters to you. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really matter which order, but... Oof. You know, I like what I see from Newcastle, I have to say. I mean, we, you know, we haven't said anything about the likes of Botman and, and Cher. I mean, arguably the best duo in the league. I mean, defensively, they're the, the best team. I look at Trippier, who for me is an incredible leader that we don't talk about enough. I mean, incredible game once again yesterday. Somehow, Dan Byrne is one of the best left backs in the league, defying all the odds at, at, because he isn't a left back. And with his size, it's kind of funny. Anyway, Guimaraes, you saw Willock playing well, Murphy playing well, Joe Ellington coming off the bench, a player who's been superb, obviously had a little bit of an injury. Um, you know, no Almiron, they're playing well. Ooh, do I dare say, man, yeah, I'll say it, Newcastle, why not? I, I like teams that play well defensively, uh, 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 well organized. They seem to have everybody uh, healthy for the most part. So let's let's give it to Newcastle, why not? So you don't sit on the fence. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.